Bob Monkhouse asks the $64,000 question next on Scottish. That's in a couple of minutes. Hey, where's the lights? Oh. <laughs> Jacob's Happy Faces. Beaming biscuits jam-packed with a jammy cream filling. Enough to give everyone a happy face. With Jacob's Happy Faces, you'll smile from ear to ear. I'm not saying you eat these crisps, you're gonna get rich. You don't get rich, I get rich. You're wrong, actually, pal, because now Golden Wonder are paying anyone to eat the crisps with thousands of cash prizes. <laughs> but only in Scotland, not England. Okay, don't nobody move. <laughs> Let us down here, hurry. Evening, Super. What's the score? Who the devil are you? Arthur Daly. The first ever reminder, Thursday at 8.30 on Scottish. Well, now on Scottish, Bob Monkhouse presents the general knowledge quiz with the $64,000 question. It's the $64,000 question, and here's the master of the quiz, Bob Monkhouse. Thank you. This is the program that rewards knowledge. Although some people believe that uh, mankind was happier in simple, simple times. They blame traffic jams and pollution on whoever invented the very first wheel. I don't think it was his fault. I, I blame the bloke who invented the other three. <laughs> I just let that joke spread like a rumor. <laughs> Mind you, I would hate to be the final adjudicator on this particular program because I'm not a very good judge. I had a terrible thing happen last week. A local committee uh, came around to our house to ask me to be a judge in a beauty contest. And then my wife answered the door, and they took one look at her and changed their minds. <laughs> Meet six other people who may be wishing they'd changed their minds, but it's too late now. Tonight's players. And there they sit thinking, if only I could have thrown straight, I could have been on bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> joins us making her first appearance on the road to riches a housewife and mother from Worcester and then uh, last week Anthony Holly from Old Coolsdon won 64 pounds with his knowledge of the Rolling Stones tonight he tries for 400 pounds and Philip Resch a landscape architect from East Bridgeford he answered questions on seaplanes and flying boats he's back to try for 100 pounds possibly go all the way up to 800 and Andy Harley, a beautifully based computer analyst, is back to improve on the 800 pounds he's already won with his knowledge of Julius Caesar. Eve Thompson returns from Edinburgh, hoping her knowledge of the breeds of domestic cats will help her break through the 3200 barrier, a uh, feat achieved last week by a Tasmanian, Jared Cade. He just had the one. He's a marvel. And he's going to try for the big 64, answering questions on the queen of crime, Agatha Christie. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we should wish them all a lucky night tonight. For those of you who suffer from both air sickness and sea sickness, oh, take your tablets now. We've got a player whose subject will give you both. It's the history of seaplanes and flying boats, which may leave you feeling slightly rocky, but it's already safely landed our landscape architect from East Bridgeford, 64 pounds. Let's encourage him to climb, to ascend to 800 if he can. Philip Resch. <laughs> Because of my age, I, had, I sort of flew in the times of seaplanes, and I've been in one. Have you ever been in a seaplane? Yes, I've been in a short Sunderland. Really? Under what circumstances? For long? I mean, on an actual journey? Or just no, a... it was the park down at Chatham, and I uh, went and had a look around it down at Chatham. Gosh. I don't know whether you know this, you probably do, but my uncle designed the prototype seaplane with a float under each wing. But on the very first flight, both the milkmen drowned. <laughs> I can hear the sympathy in your laughter, maybe. <laughs> Let's turn your score of 64 into a century, okay, Philip? For 100 pounds, please look at the screen. This edifice, as it was called at the time, first flew with the two components attached to each other early in 1938. The lower flying boat was called the Maya, or Maya. You can just see that written on it. I want the name of the upper seaplane for 100 pounds, please. Mercury. 
The mercury is correct. You have a hundred pounds. You want to double it? Yes, please. For two hundred pounds. I'm going to ask you a two-part question about fleet air arm seaplanes. Look at the screen, please. First part of two. In the early 1930s, the fleet air arm began to replace...